Let's get physical. April the 3rd until the 7th. Let's see what we've got. Hello Neighbor 2 is releasing physically this week on the Switch. I have to be honest, could have sworn this was out already, but no, here it is, the sequel to a viral hit that never made sense to me. Great premise, impossibly obscure execution. And I say that as someone who's recently played Alundra. I remember playing the original Hello Neighbor, which made me have so little desire to play anything like it again. But you know, probably should give them a second chance, can't always knock it out of the park with the first entry. And our executive producer, Precision Plague, is his pick of the week. And if you're in North America and want to pick this up or any of the retail games in this episode, please check the links in the description and the pinned comment. You can buy from Video Games Plus and support us at the same time. Remember, they have worldwide free shipping over 80 Canadian dollars. Standard shipping is pretty cheap to the US too, and they're just a really nice company. And anyone who buys something with our links each week, they will be put into a draw to win a $10 discount coupon. And this week's winner is Thomas P. Love Polish names. And uh, if you're not Polish, well, I apologize for my mild racism with $10. Congratulations. You'll get an email from VGP with your reparations very soon. Blade Assault looks to be releasing in Europe this week. I think North America is next week. I don't think this is a living in London live sim, but it's a 2D action roguelike platformer. I'll save the snide remarks for another time. It looks all right, pretty full on with its let's fill the screen with loads of numbers and explosions, that kind of way. I don't know about you, but I love epileptic fits. This is a reasonably priced game, and the cover art is pretty rad if you're into mid-2000s cartoons. Curse of the Sea Rats is a game I feel like I've heard since the beginning of time. This name has been around quite a bit, and it's stuck with me like flies around a healthy elephant dump just because of the name. That is a proper video game name. Although if I was the marketing team, I would have stayed clear of rats, because rats are well known for their marketability. Change it to Wombats! Instant sales success. I'd buy anything with Wombats in the title. Even Waifu Uncovered Wombat Bikini Edition. Actually, don't want to give them any ideas. This is a side-scrolling action game. Kind of things we've seen a lot of before, but it's a step up in the presentation department. Hand-drawn department. Looks alright, but not something I'd personally be rushing out to play, unless they change the rats to uh, anime vampire ladies. Or wombats. And our executive producers, Cartoon Soren, Offone, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, and the Robotech have chosen this as their pick of the week. Maybe rats are more popular than I thought. Grim Grimoire, once more, is a remaster of a PS2 game that came out very late in its life, so I don't think many people took much notice of this one, but it was made by Vanillaware, who are now industry darlings. It was only their second release, and it mixes side-scrolling and real-time strategy. A very ambitious mix that looked great, but ended up being mildly repetitive in the end. I don't know if this remaster helped tweak that, but it's added other things like skill trees, quality of life features, new voice acting, and it looks gorgeous, which, you know, call me Mr. Shallow, but that's the important thing for me in this game. It's NIS America, and it's one of their lesser publicized titles, so I don't expect this to hang around for too long, or, you know, get reprints in the future. And our executive producers, Instacritic, Parsnip Coffee, Alexander Cato, Osgolo, Jennifer M, and Viz have chosen this as their pick of the week. All right, The Low Prince. 2D and Top D is one of two limited run releases this week. 2D and Top D is just about every indie game ever made. Okay, actually it's pretty cool as it mixes gaming dimensions from a 2D dimension into an alternative dimension where I'm actually funny. I mean, into a top-down perspective, it looks pretty clever. Probably makes me feel like a moron while playing though. Reviews are quite positive on this one, and you can pre-order on the 4th, I believe. Same with their other one, Neon City Riders. This is an interesting looking one. Seems to be mixing cyberpunk with 80s horror movies. I don't know, looks pretty decent. What's wrong with me? I'm being way too nice this week. Don't like it. I've been playing too much Kirby. I played 12 Kirby games in a row, and his happiness and stuff is just like... 
I like being miserable and cynical. Speaking of more positive stuff, I've got some super rare news for you. Their release of Hell Pie came with a game-breaking bug that I'm told was unavoidable. Turns out literally no one between the developers or at Super Rare decided to play it long enough to test it properly. That's what happens when these publishers are too busy pumping the market. Anyway, Super Rare are offering to print a new cartridge, but you've only got a week or so to apply for it. So if you want a new cartridge with a patch on the cart, go to Super Rare's socials to find out how to do that. So, the imports. It turns out literally every single person in Asia and Japan are just chilling. They're all on holiday up a mountain or something like that, or on a beach, because there are zero imports. Nothing in Asia, nothing in Japan this week, zero. But I do want to update you on some new news about some new newsy announcements of import stuff. I like to do that. These are not releasing this week, but if you pre-order them with the links in the description, you can also get 5% off with your pre-order with SWTV23. Fitness Boxing Fist of the North Star is the most exciting one since so many people have asked me about this game. If it's getting an English physical release or not, I said, I don't know, but it turns out the answer is yes. In Asia, they are getting an English physical release very soon. In a couple of weeks, in fact. So if you think the normal fitness boxings are too sissy for you and you need to be Chad approved before you dance and pretend to punch the air, this game is for you. Feel the manliness exude from your arms as they ache like a bitch. Handy Games Deluxe Pack is a triple pack of games releasing in Japan. This has Gianna Sisters, which the West already has physically, but it will also include two more games that don't have physical releases, One Hand Clapping and Pile Up. 30 bucks? That's pretty good value for money. $10 per game on a cartridge. Why not? This is coming in May. Grisaya Phantom Trigger. 5.5 to 8 is the second half of the Phantom Trigger series, containing four more episodes to conclude what already came out physically before. This is quite a lot of content, having all eight episodes together over two cartridges in English, that's pretty cool. One for VN fans for sure. Same with The Fox Awaits Me Hannah, which is releasing later this year. This is the sequel to The Fox Awaits Me, which was an early VN import. I actually reviewed it, but probably don't watch it. It's not my finest review ever. Still, quite enjoyable, and this looks to be an improvement. Only thing I'm disappointed in is that there's been no word of a sequel to My Girlfriend is a Mermaid? Come on, where's my wife's a minotaur? I'd even write it for you, it would be brilliant. My fiance is a hobgoblin. Speaking of goblins, Goblin Slayer, another adventurer, Nightmare Feast, is an awesome looking tactical RPG that's releasing physically in Japan this year with English. It's got a polar bear and a pope's robe. Uh, yeah, it looks great, but mm, there's only been like a few seconds of footage, so it doesn't matter. Look at it. I like it. I want it. Got English. Yes. Anyways, before we get into the community spotlight, I've got some good discounts for ya. Yeah, a quick mention to some physical discounts. VGP are currently having a big sale on Sega and Atlas games. Quite a lot for the Switch too. I took a particular eye to Shin Megami Tensei V, which is like $30. Catherine, which is $22. Bucks. I'm talking American bucks here, yeah? Just go have a look at all of them with the links below, okay? You have been warned. And also, Red Art Games are having a pretty massive sale with quite a few of their games 50% off, and even better, if you click our link, our 10% discount code should still work. SWATCH10 for an extra 10% off, make the most of it with the links below. Blazing Beaks, 15 euros, plus our 10% off as well, oh yeah. Children's Zodiac, 18 euros, go nuts guys, but please click the links below first to support us, we will earn something if you click and buy. And speaking of Red Art Games, one of the games currently on sale for just 15 euros is Warlock 2 God Slayers. Or oh, it's even less if you click our link and use our code SWATCH10. This is a retro style platformer where four friends can play together. It has RPG mechanics and humorously written dialogue. Five different Warlocks to play as. It's pretty old school in many of its aspects, but I've had a decent amount of fun playing through a few levels. It has a twin stick shooter vibe, at least with the character that I played, firing off at enemies, 
picking up loot and experience to add to your skill tree. I think it might end up being quite a tough game though. The thing that stands out about this one though for me is the pixel artwork. It looks really lovely, especially the characters. I can see a lot of love was put into this. And Red Hot Games release comes with inside art and the game is complete on cartridge. There is no update needed, which is always a nice bonus. Although when the game loads up, it does take an inordinately long time to do it, like one or two minutes. I thought I had a dead cartridge for a good minute there, but no, 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 it's it's fine. Just, just wait, go make a cup of tea. And if you want it, check the links in the description and use our code for an extra 10% off on top of whatever it's discounted to now. All right, on to you lot. Our man in Japan, Vei, got in a boatload of games this week, including Serial Cleaners, which released last week. He also managed to track down Metal Dogs, which recently got an update to add English to the Japanese release. Nice. Chewit sent in this photo, including the super obscure Male Mole, which was released somewhere in mainland Europe, but it's only going to be super obscure for a short amount of time because it will be getting a North American release later this year, thanks to VGP. Executive producer Instacritic sent in this photo. In the middle, second from the left, is another Japanese game that got a reprint, this time to add English onto the cartridge. Very nice indeed. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. It's Butterfly something. I don't know. I don't know. Kraken sent in this photo showing off Islets, one of the newer games from Super Rare. Apparently, it's really good, so that's nice. Executive producer Cartoon Sorensen in this photo showing off some nice games. The Japanese release of Ib came in a nice big box for the collector's edition with a nice art book. Check out my review if you didn't watch it. Transient Image, many thanks for using our links to pick up some of these games. Some sweet RPG goodness. But remember, Ghost 1.0 was sold out but got a reprint at Play Asia. A lot of their older titles did get a reprint, which is always nice for those who are late to the collector scene. Cyan Wisp sent in this photo with Neo Geo Pocket Color Volume 2. Has anyone seen like a whiff of the European release yet? I don't know what's going on there. Same with the North American release. I don't think that's appeared either. Bunny Bear sent in this photo with an awesome looking sleeve for Demon's Tilt. Now that's metal as hell. Also, it looks like the Japanese release of Gal Guardians was not affected by the copyright claim like the Western release. It's still Grim Guardians here. Executive producer Robotech, thanks for using our links to purchase these. Company Man and Reverie must have been a long time coming considering how long delayed Omen of Sorrow was. I hope the wait was worth it. Tap and then Nap showed us there's no way he'd be contracted to build the pyramids, but some awesome looking Legend of Heroes tastiness going on here. Marty Mar picked up these games including Serious Sam, which is a game I actually missed in this series. It was on special reserve, but because they announced pre-orders like three years in advance, I forgot about it. And I couldn't be asked to mention it again. I think it also got a retail release. Executive producer Alex M sent in this photo showing up a nice bunch of games. If you missed Contra, and if you want it, VGP, Video Games Plus, they have it in stock, okay? Grab it before you regret it. Love that collection. I love the Game Boy game. That's my favorite Contra game, the Game Boy one. That's weird, isn't it? That bloody sadomasochist, their words, not mine, sent in this huge haul of games, including the ridiculously expensive Dust. RXN ain't cheap either. Personally, you know, all these like really rare games, I just, I just wait until the Switch's successor is out like one or two years just just to be sure it's not going to get a reprint and you're going to lose like hundreds of dollars but you know that's just my advice i'm not an expert i'm not a businessman whatever executive producer isa sent in this haul including the breath of the wild with expansion pass once again it sold out super quickly on play asia i hope you were quick i know some of you grabbed it but uh, i really hope they have more soon Executive producer Thorn Metal Luna sent in this photo, including Rack and Ruin from Premium Edition Games. Not exactly their most like must-have title, but uh, still a decent game from what I've heard. Visuals aside, not a fan of the visuals. All right, let's have a roundup. Wim, the One, Philip, Pabs. Robin H. Dave E. Ashura G. McLaren. G. 
Gundam Wing Zero. Mickey McFlynn. Theo. Wankel Rotary Engine. Invasorzim. Starvey. Twiggy. All right, please send me your pictures on Twitter at so what about game DM me or you can send it in an email switch watch spotlight at gmail.com don't send it to our normal email address okay because it, it, it we delete a lot of stuff because it looks like spam and we have a discord uh, the server link is in the description you can submit it in the submission section once I open it up please only send me one picture per week or a collage like as long as it's one file okay Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Get Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dame Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J-Cross 7776, Punky Doostar, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Isa, V, Mental Traveler, Ophone, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, Karacha, Ozgolo, Totally Grateful, and... Alex M. Plus you. Yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, please leave me a wombat emoji. There's no wombats emoji, right? Because there's no justice in the world. A rat. A sea rat emoji in the comments. And then I know who you are. And I can give you like a little high five and stuff like that. Please go watch my uh, East Retrospective. It released on Friday. It's doing okay. Not too bad. Um, not as high as like Skies of Arcadia did at the beginning or Sui Coden 2, but you know, it's ease. I can't expect too much. But yeah, please go watch it. It's two hours long. It's uh, mildly funny, I would say, I would hope. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you like these videos, you'll definitely like that. Yeah, take care. Goodbye. <laughs>